A dynamic storm system is still set to move across the U.S. and expand this week. This video will break down the newest data in regards to that setup. That includes a look at how cold your temperatures could get behind the storm. Thank you for joining me in this video. I don't want to waste your time, so let's take the latest look at the setup that will bring in active weather as we go through the rest of this week. You'll probably note the big jet stream dip that's going to bring a lot of our impacts. Here it is, coming down from the northwest U.S., and then by the time we get towards Wednesday, making it over to the central and eastern parts of the country. This semi-cut-off atmospheric low pressure and a dip in the jet stream called a trough will not only bring atmospheric impacts, but impacts at the surface as well. Those impacts will be including a storm system as well as a cooldown that will last for days as we see the jet stream continuing to dive on down as we go towards the end of the week. Let's go ahead and take the latest look at the storm system expected to cross the country with this setup. We can do just that by playing out some blended future radar guidance like what I have here on the screen. Let's go ahead and do just that pushing things out of our Monday when I'm recording this and into Tuesday with this animation. One area you'll note getting in on some active weather will be parts of the central U.S. With the semi-cutoff dip in the jet stream starting to slide into that region on Tuesday, it's no wonder that zones like the upper Midwest, the central plains, as well as the southern plains will get in on a chance for some showers as well as some gusty winds. Overall, flooding doesn't necessarily look to be a big threat as some of this rainfall quickly pushes through at the end of the day Tuesday, but the threat for flooding will begin to increase as this system pushes east into Wednesday. There will be some gusty winds, there will be that heavy rainfall and that risk for flooding pushing over into parts of the Midwest, the Mid-Mississippi Valley, even the Lower Mississippi Valley and Deep South as we go through the first half of Wednesday. In fact, as this low pressure system through multiple layers of the atmosphere continues orbiting around parts of the eastern U.S. on Wednesday, there won't be too much of a shift in where the rain goes from Wednesday morning to Wednesday evening. Even with the latest shifts, data continues to show parts of Indiana, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Alabama, Georgia, and then over into the Appalachians region will be getting in on quite a bit of rain through much of the day Wednesday as well as into Wednesday night. That is certainly where a risk for some concerning flooding could go on the rise. Eventually, the center of our mid and upper level low pressure system will begin to move east with that jet stream energy. As that occurs into our Thursday, that's where surface energy is also going to begin moving east and up the coastline from parts of the Appalachians region and then over towards the mid-Atlantic. That's where the best chance for some heavy downpours causing issues will be on Thursday morning. There could certainly be ponding on roadways, the risk for flooding in the Delmarva region, even up into the New York City region as early as the Thursday morning commute, so be aware of the risk for that and take it slow out there on the roadways. As Thursday goes on, there will be even more in the way of rainfall pushing up into the rest of the northeast. Some of that rain could continue as the system will be pretty slow moving into the early part of Friday. Friday afternoon will be a rainy and breezy time as you come through cities like New York City, especially up to Boston, and then into the interior regions from there. As we continue to see this low pressure system pivoting up into Canada, there will be some lingering showers and lake effect type activity continuing into the first day of November on Saturday. Overall though, things look to be drying out over much of the country out of Friday and into Saturday morning. With that system timeline in mind, let's take a look at the latest projected rainfall totals with this storm system according to the Weather Prediction Center. As we go from late Tuesday through the end of our Thursday, that is where a lot of our rainfall that will get in parts of the Midwest over into the Ohio Valley as well as the Mid-Atlantic region will occur. You see these zones with the blues and the yellows, that is where widespread rainfall totals in excess of a half an inch to an inch may occur, and that is where we could at least get some isolated flooding. Certainly be on the lookout for that and take it slow on those roadways. As we go out of Thursday and into Friday, that's where a lot of the heavier rainfall will pivot up into the northeast. During that time frame, there could be more one to three inch rainfall totals with a few locally higher amounts in pretty much all parts of any of these northeast states. Again, with this widespread heavy rainfall, I advise taking it slow on the roadways. It doesn't even take any kind of significant flooding coming across the roadway for there to be ponding and for there to be slick conditions. One other impact that will hit many zones as the dynamic storm moves across the country will be the chance for some gusty winds ahead of the system and behind it as we see that dip in the jet stream coming on in. As we go out of our Tuesday and into the Wednesday, October 29th timeframe, 
That's where, with low pressure likely stationed around the mid-Mississippi Valley, there will actually be some hefty gusts pivoting into zones that will be drying out behind the low. Especially through parts of the central plains and then down towards the deep south, there will be some northwest winds coming in at upwards of 30 to 40 miles per hour. That can not only blow some tree branches around and knock off a lot of those fall leaves, it will also be bringing in quite the chill. While those zones will be breezy, there will also be some 20 plus mile per hour gusts in the rainfall further east, and a lot of breeziness will be associated with downpours that continue over much of the eastern U.S. as we go into Thursday. In the zone I circled, widespread 20 to 30 mile per hour gusts with some up to 35 miles per hour can be expected Thursday afternoon. Gusts will continue to pivot around the rainfall and even in behind it into the northeast U.S. into our Friday and early Saturday. Before I break down the cooler temperatures that will come in behind this system, here's a reminder that the awesome weather model maps I use in my videos are from Weatherbell. Check out their free trial link down below in the description of this video. Also down below the video, if you're enjoying it, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on those notifications. If you do turn on those notifications, you'll get alerted when I post more videos. I include custom graphics in almost every single one of my videos to make them more visually appealing and easy to understand. In fact, that comment is right on cue because here's a look at one of my custom graphics as we begin to track out the temperature zones and trends expected through the rest of this week. For the midweek time frame, as we go out of Tuesday into Wednesday and Wednesday night, that's where we are expecting some cooler than average temperatures over parts of the Rockies and then stretching down into the central plains behind that low pressure system. There will already be some cooler air in the east. That's in association with some recent systems that have already pushed through. That cooler air will just get reinforced more as we go into the late week time frame around Thursday and Friday with that dip in the jet stream coming on in. From parts of Kansas, Oklahoma, and Texas all the way to the east coast from there, expect temperatures around 5 to even 15 degrees below average at times as we round out the week. That will include for those of you who are going trick-or-treating on our Halloween night. With that being said, let's actually take a look at what those anomalies will equate to in terms of actual temperatures each day and each night through the next few days. Starting out with a look at the forecasted highs as we go into our Tuesday, October 28th in the afternoon, one thing you'll notice is a decent push of 60s for highs all the way up to the Midwest for the time being. These temperatures are around to even a little bit above average for this time of the year, but above average conditions will be sliding out of these zones as we go through especially late Tuesday into Tuesday night. Look at the morning lows expected especially around and behind where the low pressure will be into our early Wednesday morning. With low pressure moving over here into the Mississippi Valley region there will be a lot of 20s and 30s getting pulled in behind it. That's of course as that jet stream dip will be fueling all of this up. As we go into Wednesday afternoon, look at the highs expected then with rainfall going on in some parts of the Ohio Valley region. Highs will only hit about 50 degrees. Even back behind that into some parts of the central and southern plains, the northern plains, with dry conditions, temperatures will only hit about 50 to 55 degrees there as that trough, that dip in the jet stream will be diving on in. Overnight, Wednesday night into Thursday morning, expect cooling conditions in comparison to what you saw Wednesday morning here for parts of the Midwest back down to the South Central Plains. Even North Texas will wake up Thursday morning to some numbers in the mid and upper 30s. Thursday afternoon, yep, another cool one. Lots of 50s pretty far south for this time of the year, all the way down to Oklahoma and Arkansas, parts of Mississippi, Alabama, and Georgia where things will be clearing out, but it won't warm up too much. Very unusual cool for this time of the year, and that cool will especially be noted all the way down to the Gulf Coast. Here we go again into the morning of our Halloween, down to the Texas coast, the Louisiana coast, the Mississippi, Alabama, the Georgia coast, the Carolina coast, lots of 30s and low 40s around. As you go further north from there, there's going to be a widespread frost on going through much of these zones that I just circled. Further north from there, expect freeze conditions waking up on Friday, although that's more normal for zones like the upper Midwest back towards the Mountain West. What about the highs mid to late on our Friday for those of you who might be doing early trick-or-treating? Highs will be around the 40s to the 50s, pretty normal for this time of the year as you come up here towards some parts of the northern U.S. into the Great Lakes in the northeast. If anything, it's going to be a little cooler than average, especially as the sun goes down, so you'll probably want to have any kids wearing those bigger jackets. All the way down to the southern and southeastern coast, it will still be pretty chilly on Friday, 60s to maybe around 70 for a high, and it will quickly drop as the sun sets. With that being said, that is all of the main points I have for this video. Let's go ahead and recap the main headlines I just discussed. Headline number one, of course, is that the storm system setup coming into the United States this week will be dynamic with numerous impacts possible. With that dip in the jet stream coming on down, there will be that mid and even low level storm system that will bring rain and gusty wind impacts. That system will push east somewhat slowly, and that's why the risk for flooding will be especially a concern in some zones. 
a chilly weather pattern will end off October for many. It will be a chilly Halloween in comparison to normal for many zones. It will also be chilly into November, but how long will that last? Where will the biggest cooldowns be as we go into the first week of the month? I'll cover that more in my next video. Stay tuned for that update by making sure you have those notifications turned on for this channel. Again, if you haven't already, I'd love it if you'd hit that like button, subscribe to the channel down below. Thank you so much for tuning into this one. God bless you all. By the way, let's all be praying for Jamaica with that terrible hurricane happening there. One nation weather.